This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of Hack 5. I'm Shannon Morse and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. Now obviously I'm kind of here all by myself. Darren ran away to Disneyland for like a week. I have no clue when he's going to come back so I'm pretty much holding down the fort myself. Hope you guys enjoy it. We have plenty of content so let's get right into it right now. You guys know how we feel about wireless routers here. We love them. We love them almost as much as we love vulnerabilities. And here to marry the both of them, the one and only Craig Hafner. Craig, how are you, man? Good. How you been? Oh, not bad. Not bad. It's so good to see you. Last time we talked, it was at ShmooCon two years ago, talking about Reaver Pro and uh, breaking into you know uh, WPS-enabled routers. I hear you're doing it again. What's the uh, what's the vulnerability that's been getting the, uh, all the headlines lately? So um, yeah, I was actually surprised everyone was so surprised to to hear what I have to talk about because we find this kind of stuff all the time. Um, but uh, basically, uh, a group of D-Link routers had a vendor supplied backdoor uh, in them, which basically allowed you to bypass all authentication and become admin. You you make it sound like this is not like a you know, an uncommon thing to happen. Is, is this just something you stumble upon all of the time? And how did you end up stumbling upon this one in the D-Link? So it does actually happen quite a bit, uh, a lot more than you might think. Um, you know, vendors will leave um, some backdoor in either for development or manufacturing, or they'll forget about it or something like that. Um, in this case, uh, I was just kind of bored and pulled down some old D-Link firmware and was just kind of going through looking at, at what it had in it. I thought, gee, that looks weird. What is that doing? And it, it turned out to be a backdoor. So I just kind of stumbled upon this one. OK. And so uh, what routers are affected, and how exactly does the backdoor uh, go about working? Uh, so the ones that I've identified are uh, the DIR100, the DIR120, uh, the DI624S, the DI604S, the DI604UP, the DI524UP, the DI604 Plus, and the TMG. 5240. Um, there's also a couple of PlanX routers that apparently use the same firmware as D-Link. Um, the BRL04R, the BRL04UR, and the 04CW. Okay, and so what does this allow an attacker to do? What's the vulnerability here? So, so basically, um, all of the firmwares for these um, have an administrative interface implemented as a web server, which most embedded devices do. Um, what the back door is, is it looks for a specific user agent string. And if you have this very specific user agent string set, it says, oh, well, I don't need to check your credentials. You're just authenticated. You're admin. Go ahead. <laughs> so you can just go into your browser and set that string as your user agent, and then just browse any of these routers, and they let you right into the admin interface. And what exactly is the string that you use? Um, it's actually in the blog post. It's, uh, it's, it's basically, uh, if you have to read it backwards, um, it's, it's the name of the de developer, which is Joel, and then uh, it's a four-digit number, maybe an employee number, and then um, it has the word backdoor backwards in it as well. Um, but it's a nice long string, but if, you, but if you put that backward string in as your um, user agent, uh, yeah, you, it'll let you right in. Now, you mentioned in the blog post that the only other place that you uh, saw this particular string on the internet was on like some Russian forum. You want to speculate on that, or you have any insight there? So they, um, it looked like on the Russian forum, and I'm just going based on Google Translate because I can't read Russian. Uh, but based on what Google Translate told me, um, they were they were looking to um, take some ISP provided uh, D-Link routers, and I think specifically it was the DI524UP, um, and root them because their their ISP hadn't given them credentials to the the routers, um, and so they were looking for some Telnet uh, credentials because Telnet was enabled on the device. Um, and so, they, so one of the posts said, hey, I found this weird string in the web server. Uh, maybe we should try that as the Telnet login, basically. And then that was it. The forum stopped. So I don't know if they figured it out and kept it to themselves or if they and have been using it for years or if, if they just never put, uh, put it together that that should be a user agent string. Okay, um, so, so given that it's simply a user agent string that you pass, you know, to the web interface, that all automatically, you know, you're already assuming now that we're on the network. So how big is this footprint really as far as the attack vector is concerned? And what are some of the other ways, like considering this allows, you know, could potentially even allow, you had mentioned uh, arbitrary code execution on the blog. What does that kind of mean to consumers? So 
I mean, the best way to protect yourself is to not have remote admin enabled because then you do have to have either LAN or wireless access um, in order to, to exploit it. Um, but there are a lot of these devices, thousands of them out there that have remote admin enabled. And so those are, you know, can be hacked by anyone who can change a user agent string in their browser settings. Um, and, and there is a remote code execution vulnerability um, that is accessible thanks to the backdoor. Um, normally, you would need admin credentials to get to that piece of code that's vulnerable, but uh, of course, we don't need that. We have a user agent string. Um, and so what that means is that I can run any code I want and load any programs I want onto your router, which incidentally controls all of your network traffic. So I can put, say, TCP dump and start capturing all of your, your network traffic. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Couple it with a uh, you know open VPN tunnel, and then just mirror all the traffic out somewhere else. Um, just the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, what did the vendor say when when this came out? Uh, so D-Link uh, is supposed to be re actually releasing patches for these uh, firmwares by tomorrow, which is the thirty first. Okay, and so as we know, everybody is you know constantly refreshing their vendor's <laughs> website to see if there's a new firmware to to install those. I know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the problem is, you know, there was, there was kind of big news in a very small set of circles about this. Most people have no idea that it's there. Um, they have no idea what firmware is, and they're probably not going to update their firmware. Um, now, most of these routers are older. Um, some of them have been end of life for a couple of years, actually. Um, and to D-Link's credit, uh, they are claiming that they're going to update the firmware even for those end of life models. Um, uh, but we'll see how many people actually apply the patches on these. So that, that would be the best way to mitigate this vulnerability, you would say, is to apply the new firmware? Yeah, I mean, assuming that they, they fix it and don't mess something else up. But, you know, um, we'll, again, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, so what do us hackers do? I mean, what router do you run at home? <laughs> I get asked that question a lot because I, I do a lot of router exploitation. Um, I am, thanks to my ISP, unfortunately, tied to the router my ISP gave me for technical reasons. Um, so I don't look at that firmware. I don't want to know. Um, ignorance is bliss. Uh, but if, if, you, if you have the technical knowledge, putting something like open word on your router um, is definitely suggested. Awesome. And so I, w I would love to know, like, given the fact that you have like, done a lot of router hacking, if you could make actually one change in the consumer electronics space as far as routers are concerned and home networking gear, what would it be? I think that there just needs to be a lot more quality assurance and oversight in terms of security. I mean, a lot of the vulnerabilities you see are things like this. They leave a back door in the system and they don't think anything of it. Um, they don't even consider security. It's, it's an afterthought. Um, so I think a, just more of an emphasis on security, more of a security mindset when building these devices and designing them would go a long way to, to fixing a lot of these uh, stupid, simple vulnerabilities that you find. Sweet. Well, Craig, it's awesome to hear from you. I know that you guys over at TNS are doing some fantastic stuff. You've got the, the latest Reaver Pro out and whatnot. Where can people continue to find out uh, your research and what's new with TNS? Um, you can go to uh, our website at uh, tacnetsol.com, uh, as well as my blog on devttys0.com. All right, Craig, it's awesome to see you as always. Thank you so much. Thank you, Darren. No, I'm, I'm going to have to call you back. Actually, hang on just a second. Hey, you know, it really doesn't matter if you're a monkey in the middle or a hacker working for bananas. If you've got that killer idea, when it hits, you need to snag that domain name and the web hosting fast. And with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system, it's easy to check out and have your website up and running in no time. I mean, I love Domain.com. They're affordable, reliable, they're easy to use, and they're on social media, at Domain.com on Twitter. It makes it a really fun place to do business because they're huge fans of Hack5. So they've got the hookup, get this, 15% off. They're already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HACK5 at checkout. That's right, they've got the hookup, H-A-K-5. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Yeah. 40 tons of bananas. Welcome back, and now it's time for the trivia question of the week. Last week's trivia question was, what unit of measurement denotes half of a bite? And the answer was a nibble. Mmm, delicious. Now this week's trivia question is, who invented the walkie-talkie? You can answer that at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies.